In this video, we're going to be seeing how we can use the text animator tracking property in order to animate the spacing between characters in our text in Adobe After Effects. Great, so we're in Adobe After Effects and I've just got a very simple composition open with a simple background layer just to add some interest to our composition. So what we're going to do to start off with is create a text object. So to do that, we can either go to the text tool at the top here, as you can see, the icon is a T, or as you can see, the small pop-up indicates, we can press on the keys Command and T or Control and T for Windows in order to bring up the text tool. So what I'm gonna do is just press once on my canvas. And as you can see, I've now created a text object and I'm just gonna type in the word tracking. And then once I'm happy with this, all I have to do is go back to the selection tool in order to confirm my choice. I might just quickly align this text to the center of our composition. So to do that, all we have to do is go to the right hand panel here and press on the word align. And as you can see, we get these six options that come up. So I'm just gonna press on this middle one, which is align horizontally and then align vertically, which allows me to align it to the vertical axis too. If you want more information on this, I did recently do a video on animating position in After Effects. So do remember to check that out. I'll make sure I leave a link to that in the description below. So we've now got our text object. I'm just gonna quickly center the anchor point because that's something I like to do. So I'm gonna go up to the pan behind tool, which is just to the left of the shape tool. And all I'm gonna do is hold command on my keyboard or control for windows and double click on this tool. And as you can see, it's centered the anchor point for this object. If that hasn't worked for you, just make sure you have the correct layer selected. And then I'm gonna quickly go to the selection tool, which is this first option here, where as you can see, the shortcut to it is V. So now we have our text object created. And what we can do is we can now go ahead and actually apply this tracking text animation property. So in order to do that, we have to go to the timeline panel at the bottom here and just make sure that we have the correct layer selected. We can then press on this small arrow just to the left of this red icon and expand this and then expand the text option as well. Then in order to actually add the property, all we have to do is go to animate on the right hand side here and press on this small arrow pointing to the right. As you can see, this brings up a drop down, and from this drop down, we can actually select tracking. And as you can see, what it's done is it's actually gone ahead and created a new animator. So as you can see at the moment, it's called animator one, but if you want to stay organized, all you have to do is right click and press on rename. And we could, for example, call it tracking. Just so we know which property we're actually adjusting. And then what we have are two key values, which are the tracking type and the tracking amount. We've also got a range selector, which allows you to do all sorts of different timing things. But for now, I'm gonna actually ignore this. I think all we need to cover in this video, just to keep it nice and simple, is this tracking amount option. So essentially what tracking allows us to do is adjust the spacing between the characters in our composition. So at the moment, everything is going to track from the center and you'll see what I mean by this when I adjust this value. So at the moment it's set to zero, which means no tracking is applied. But if I just hover over this value, as you can see my cursor changes to this hand with two arrows pointing left and right. If I hold my left mouse key and drag to the right, as you can see, I can increase the amount of tracking, which is actually increasing the space between all of my characters. Or I could go in reverse and go into the negative values as you can see, I can actually decrease the spacing between my values until there's no spacing left. Or I could even go even further and as you can see, invert the text itself. Now I'm just gonna quickly reset that to zero. So what I'm gonna do in this example is actually decrease the amount of tracking in an animation. So what we have to do is make sure that our current time indicator is set to zero seconds. And then I'm just gonna press on the stopwatch just to the left of tracking amount in order to start the keyframing. As you can see, this has created an initial keyframe. So I'm gonna input an initial value, uh, let's say 40, and then press enter. And then I'm gonna quickly move my cursor to perhaps the two second mark, and then set this back to zero. And now all I have to do is drag the indicator back to zero seconds and then press on the space bar to preview the animation. And as you can see, over the course of two seconds, the tracking between our characters decreases. So this gives us a cool, almost cinematic effect. 
Now, as you can see at the moment, the tracking is actually occurring from the center of our text. But in some cases, you might not want this to be the case. So if I just quickly go to zero seconds where the tracking is at its most, in order to actually change where this tracking initially starts from, what we have to do is add another text property to this text object. So once again, we have to go to animate and then go to line anchor. And then once the line anchor has been added, so it's been added in that same animator that we initially created. And as you can see, the current value it has is 50%. And what you have to imagine with this line anchor is almost the same as our normal anchor point that we have on text objects. The anchor point basically allows us to control the point of origin for transform properties. I have also made a video on anchor points. So if you want to understand that more, I'll also leave it in the description. But essentially what you have to do is imagine there is a line, which is this line anchor. You can ignore this anchor point for now, but imagine there is a invisible line between these two dots, which marks the 50% mark. So 0% is the left hand side of our text. 100% is the right hand side and 50% is the center. So at the moment, because it's set to 50%, it means that our tracking is going to originate from the center of our text. As you can see, it's all going closer to that central point. But if I actually change this, so for example, set it to the 0% mark, and now we'll go ahead and change the tracking amount. As you can see, when I decrease it, it's actually going to get closer to the left-hand side of the text. And once again, I can actually also go all the way to 100%, in which case it's actually going to go from the right-hand side. And you can obviously have any value in between, which will then give you a mixed result. So I'm just going to undo that several times just so we reset everything to how we originally had it. So I think that was about right. So those are the essentials of how the tracking animation actually works. So you can set the tracking amount, which increases or decreases the space between our characters. And then we've also got the line anchor, which actually allows us to control whereabouts the tracking is originating from. Now, how can we actually make this look slightly more interesting? At the moment, we have an animation that looks all right, but how can we actually make this animation look slightly more interesting? Well, to start off with, I'm just gonna press S on my keyboard in order to bring up the scale properties. And then I'm gonna decrease the size of our text slightly, perhaps to 75%, just so we have a bit more space to work with. And then I'm gonna go back to zero seconds. Now, the next thing I might actually want to change is perhaps I want to add a opacity change as well. So I can press T on my keyboard in order to bring up the opacity and I can just press on the stopwatch in order to start the animation and perhaps drag this to two seconds because that's when we want the animation to end and perhaps set the opacity to let's say 0%. And as you can see when this tracks in it's now also going to fade in which should be quite a nice transition. Then lastly I might also actually change the scale so I'm going to press S once again and when we're at two seconds, I want it to be 75%. So I'll start the stopwatch animation there. And then I'll go back to start and perhaps set the scale to, let's say, 80%. So not as dramatic change as the others. And then press play just to quickly preview that. So that looks all right at the moment. I'm just going to press U in order to bring up all the keyframes that we created for this layer specifically. Then I'm going to select all of our keyframes. And now I'm going to add an easing animation to both. So either you can right click on one of the keyframes, go to keyframe assistant and press on easy ease. Or as you can see, the shortcut is F9. So I'm going to press that shortcut because that's a much quicker way to apply this. And then one final thing I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go to the graph. So the graph editor is just this icon right here. And then I'm going to right click on the graph and go to edit speed graph. Then I'm gonna just hold and drag and select these last keyframes and then drag on this yellow line to the left and just push it all the way until we get a graph that looks like this. And then quickly undo the graph editor just to go back to the original one. And now if I press spacebar, as you can see, we get a very smooth transition where we've animated not only the tracking, so the spacing between all of our characters, but also the scale and opacity of our text. Now, just to show you what it looks like by actually changing the line anchor property, I'm just gonna quickly pause that and expand all of these options again. 
until we can see line anchor. And then I'm going to set it to 0% to start off with and then go back to the start. As you can see, all the tracking is now actually going to originate from the left hand side. So this is just a great way to be able to actually change this. If I set it to 100%, then once again, it's also going to go from the other side. So that was how we can actually animate the tracking property in our text objects in Adobe After Effects. If you're interested in learning how you can actually apply motion blur in Adobe After Effects, then do check out the video in the top right hand corner of the end screen. And also do remember to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and do remember to subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss a new Adobe After Effects tutorial.